My name is Kanuri Rao and I am the co-founder and chief scientific officer of Predomics Technologies Private Limited. It's a healthcare startup that's located in Gurga. Early stage cancer detection is a challenge and the, the, the primary reason for the challenge is at that stage there are only a handful of cancer cells in the body. Uh, so if you look for markers that these cancer cells are producing, be it uh, genetic markers, proteins and so on, then the amount is produces very little uh, and often below the limits of detection sensitivity. So that's been the challenge. Yeah. Um, so obviously at Predomix, you know, when we were thinking about this, we realized that those kinds of strategies, uh, because of the inherent limitation, are not going to work. And one of the things we realized uh, was that cancer fundamentally is a metabolic disease. That's been well known right from the beginning. And that's because the cancer cell has to keep dividing uh, and therefore its metabolism has to be ramped up. And when you say metabolism, you're essentially talking about a, a whole series of biochemical reactions. I did my PhD in organic chemistry from Baroda way back in 1983. And after completing that, I moved to the U.S. Uh, to work there for a few years. I spent some time at the Johns Hopkins University, some, kind, some time at the University of California, Los Angeles. And one of the interesting things that happened there is I was able to switch my field of interest from chemistry to biology because I got fascinated by biological mechanisms. They are so complex and so intricate, it, it's kind of an intellectual challenge to try and understand that. And then I came back to India and for over 35 years I spent as an academician, uh, you know, uh, involved in research, leading a research team. And over the years, we, st we first started working on the immune system, understanding how the immune system, uh, you know, re responds to infections, how the antibodies are generated and so on. And from there we evolved to understanding how to map physiological changes in the body. So obviously at Predomix, you know, when we were thinking about this, we realized that those kinds of strategies, uh, because of the inherent limitation, are not going to work. And one of the things we realized uh, was that cancer fundamentally is a metabolic disease. That's been well known right from the beginning. And that's because the cancer cell has to keep dividing uh, and therefore its metabolism has to be ramped up. And when you say metabolism, you're essentially talking about a, a whole series of biochemical reactions that produce a range of small molecules. And these could be molecules like glucose or cholesterol. And there are many thousand such molecules. And they all perform important functions. So as, again, at Predomix, as we were debating this, uh, what we realize is you know, if you can actually capture these metabolites in terms of uh, what metabolites are produced by these uh, cells and relate to how they, the patterns of these metabolites change uh, in, with respect to, a, you know, when you compare a healthy versus a cancer afflicted individual, we might actually get more accurate and more sensitive insights into a, you know, a detection of cancer. Can you capture a signature in the metabolites that relates to a cancerous state? So, so you know, so, based on that logic, uh, we then developed a technology which uh, we've called Oncoverix. And it's a unique technology. What it does is actually, in principle, it, uh, you know, we take the serum from an individual and we need very little serum. We have, and for that, even less than 1 ml of blood is what we take. And then we use a technique called mass spectrometry which maps all the metabolites that are present in that serum. It, it, it maps the different metabolites that are there and these are going to thousands. We monitor about 8,000 of them. And it also maps the relative amounts that they are present in. And then what we have developed is, is a software suite that is uh, uh, comprised of multiple uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. And one set of algorithms then takes the data and scans the signatures and, and uses that to detect whether the sample is from a cancer patient or from a normal non-cancer patient. <coughs> if it is from a cancer patient, then, then another set of algorithms come in and analyze those patterns to identify what type of cancer it is, so whether it's breast cancer or lung cancer or kidney cancer or whatever. So that's our technology which we have branded as Oncoverix. 
and the first version of it is now coming into the market which detects four cancers in women. But in addition to that, we have also expanded the scope to cover 32 cancers across both men and women. And while all the pilot work is done, we are currently initiating clinical trials and hopefully by the end of 2023, we'll be able to launch the upgraded version so that it covers cancers, a whole spectrum of the most important cancers in both men and women. Uh, in terms of how we are thinking about the future, the immediate, in the immediate future over the course of the next 12 to 14 months, our focus is to complete the clinical trials in India um, and then uh, bring out the upgraded version that covers 32 cancers uh, across men and women. Um, and from 2024 onward, we would also like to take this beyond India and uh, conduct clinical trials either in Europe or the US so that we can introduce it into the markets there. In addition to that, you know, this is a nuclear, uh, this technology also can be a nucleus on which we can layer other things. For instance, we are working with some hospitals to see if we can predict. So if somebody is cancer positive, uh, the next question is will they respond or not respond to the frontline therapy? Um, that's another area we're working on with some some of the hospitals. Um, so that will be very uh, another you know important add-on. So we could layer uh, um, such kinds of add-on uh, modules to this technology. And our first uh, area of interest is can we predict if we find somebody is cancer positive or not? Can we predict whether that individual will respond to the frontline therapy or the clinician will have to look at alternate modes of therapy. These are, within the next three to four years, I would say, are uh, objectives in, in that window. Yeah.